I have just one hour left before I have to leave for my party and I have no jewellery to wear with my dress. What am I going to do? Of course I'm going to make something. <laughs> Welcome, my name's Carol. This actually happened to me a few weeks ago. I was invited to a 1950s style cocktail party. A friend of mine found a 1950s housewife, how to be a housewife book, and so we decided to have a 1950s style cocktail party. And I thought I had it all in hand, but I got to just about ready to get dressed and I realized I didn't have a necklace that went with my dress. <laughs> Not one that I really liked and that had that 1950s vibe. So I thought I would sit down and make one because, you know, leaving things at the last minute is my thing. <laughs> what I'm going to do today is I'm going to recreate that. Now something terrible happened while I was making that necklace or once I had made it. So watch to the end and I'll show you the disaster that struck and how I fixed it. I'm going to walk you step by step through making this necklace and I will also talk about everything you need. There will be a link in the description box below. The top link to a, will be to a blog post and that will contain links to all of the materials that I use today. So let's get making. Because it was a 1950s themed party, I decided that pearls would be the appropriate thing to wear because, you know, 1950s seems to scream pearls to me. But I'm not really a pearls kind of girl, certainly not a classic pearls kind of girl. So I wanted to give it a little bit of an edge. So what I did was I used some beautiful 7mm glass pearls and the colour cream, which is very traditional. And I added this gorgeous heart. This is a glass heart and it measures 20mm by 12. And it's in this beautiful turquoise colour, aqua turquoise. Aqua. <laughs> so I decided to use that as a focal and I decided to make a choker because I felt that went really well with my dress. I actually made mine in red and I will show you a picture here of what I looked like in my dress. But I wanted to make this one in blue because I have used that red bead before, <laughs> that beautiful red heart. And also the clasp that I chose was blue. It has this gorgeous sapphire in it. Now you will have seen this clasp before in my cha-cha bracelet. So if you want to check out that one, go ahead and do that afterwards because I don't want you to run away just yet. <laughs> All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is make my little dangle. And I've got here a head pin and I'm going to put on a three millimeter metal ball. I'm going to put on my heart and another three millimeter ball. Now the reason I decided to do this, well there were two reasons really. Firstly, the head on the head pin was too small and it kept going through the glass bead. So I needed to add something to stop the head pin disappearing into the heart. So the three millimeter ball was the minimal amount that I could use. And also it kind of looks like the head on the head pin once you put it on. And I decided to add one to the top because it's actually quite hard to do a loop when you have this V shape here. And I also really like the way it looks. So the next thing I'm going to do is make a loop in the top of my head pin. I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to make a bend right at the top where that wire is coming out of the bead. And the bead wants to run away. There we go. If you haven't made loops before, I'll leave you a link in the description box to a video all about how to make them and also how to troubleshoot if you have problems because I know so many people have problems making loops. Next I'm going to cut my wire at about a centimetre from the bend. So I want to hold both ends so that it doesn't fly away. And the bead is going to come off, that's okay. I'm trying to hold it on there. It just wants to wiggle around this one. And then I'm going to take my round nose pliers and make a loop. So making sure the wire isn't sticking up and twisting away from me, readjusting and twisting again. There's my focal with its loop on the top. So the head pin going through from the bottom with the three millimeter balls and the loop on the top. So I'm gonna put that aside for a minute. 
Now I didn't really talk about what I have in front of me. I've got some tiger tail. This is a 0.38 millimeter tiger tail. I've got my beautiful clasp. I've got some fine French wire and I like to use the French wire instead of a wire guardian. I've got my seven millimeter pearls, of course. I've got some four millimeter jump rings and I have some magical crimp beads. Now I learned a valuable lesson when I made this necklace and I'm gonna share that with you later. It's a really good one. <laughs> The first thing I need to do is decide how long I'm going to make my choker. So I actually need to measure my neck. So I've got my trusty tape measure here and I am going to put it around my neck and figure out where the end is and measure my neck, where I want it to sit. So that feels about right. And that is about 34 centimetres. Now I need to remember that my clasp will take up quite a lot because it's quite a large clasp. So it takes up about three centimetres. By the time I add some jump rings and things and my loop of my tiger tail, it'll be about 30 centimetres that I need. Now I'm going to use my tiger tail to thread on my beads. I pre-cut my tiger tail at about 40 centimetres and I'm going to grab a bead stopper and pop on the end. Bead stoppers are one of my favourite inventions. Now I'm going to lay out my beads. Now I need to have my necklace measure 30 centimetres. And I know from my experience of making this necklace before that I need to add 22 beads to make 15 centimetres. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to string 22 beads. So just popping them on. This is such an easy project and it was a good thing too because I really needed it to go fast except when the disaster struck. <laughs> All right, so now I have my 22 beads strung and if I measure that, it is slightly longer than the 15 centimeters. It's actually 15 and a half centimeters, but that's okay because I can adjust it later. And also you want some room to move because if you've ever worn a choker that's too tight, it's not very comfortable. Next, I'm going to put on my heart. That's what it looks like. And now I'm going to string another 22 beads. There's my 44 beads all strung on and it measures about 30 and 3 quarter centimetres. And that's fine because I need a little bit of room to move. Now the thing I like about this necklace is that I used the 7 millimetre pearls, which is a little bit unexpected. It adds that little bit more of a uh, edgy vibe because they are slightly bigger. You may remember that a wee while ago I made another choker using this heart. And I used some six millimeter baby pink pearls in that one. And I added some other stuff to make it a little bit edgy, but it was much more classic than this. I really like this. It's kind of got that edgy vibe that I'm after. If you want to check out that other pearl necklace, I'll leave you a link in the description box to that one. Next, we need to string the rest of the pearls. And this time we're just going with the uh, 44 pearls. So I will take my other piece of tiger tail and my bead stopper and thread on the rest of my pearls. Now I've strung both of my strands. All I need to do is crimp it and put it together, attaching my clasp, of course. So what I'm going to do is something a little bit unusual. I'm going to use some French wire to cover my tiger tail instead of a wire guardian. Personally, I feel that this looks really good and you will have seen that in my multi-strand cha-cha bracelet that I did recently. So this is French wire and I've pulled a little bit out here so that you can see what it looks like. It's like a little spring. It's very fine. It's not like memory wire where you let it go and it goes back. So you do need to be very careful with it. And what I'm going to do is cut four pieces at one centimetre long or thereabouts. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm just going to take my cutters and lay it down. It wants to stick to me. <laughs> And I'm going to give it a wee cut there. And I've got a little burr on the end, so you see that? So I'm going to trim that little bit off too. It's harder to thread your tiger tail through it if it's got a little burr. What you could do is use a thicker one. I'm using a fine one because I had a packet that was open, but if you wanted to use a heavier one, you could as well. The easiest way to cut this is to lay it down on your mat it's very springy as you can see. It's a little bit like wrestling a snake I think. And you want to lay it down beside it and it doesn't have to be exact, it just has to be close. And just cut it like that. And then repeat. 
two more times. There's my four little pieces of French wire. Now I'm going to put my clasp on with a jump ring, a four millimeter jump ring. You could use a six if you wanted to. I'm just using a four because I think it looks good. But if it's too fiddly, that's fine. You can use a six. Just remember though, if you use a six, it does add a few millimeters to the length of the necklace because you're going from a four to a six. So you add two millimeters per jump ring. So I'm going to open my jump ring and I'm going to put my clasp on and then I'm going to close my jump ring. If you haven't used jump rings before, I'll leave you a link in the description box to a video all about jump rings. So there we go, my jump ring is now open. I'm going to take my beautiful clasp and I'm going to flip it over because it's easier to do this from the inside. I'm going to hold my jump ring right on the point there like that and I'm going to feed that through the hole. This is a magnetic clasp so you can see it's sticking to my pliers. And then I'm going to close up my jump ring really well. Make sure that it's really well closed. And I'm going to repeat that with three more jump rings for the clasp. There's my clasp and it's got a jump ring coming through each hole on each end. If you're interested in making any of the jewellery I'm wearing today, I'll leave you links in the description box below to all of the jewellery. I'm wearing my purple Indian glass necklace. This is made with Indian glass beads. I'm wearing a purple focal bead necklace. I'm wearing the earrings that match the necklace and I'm wearing a magnetic hematite memory wire bracelet. <laughs> what I found when I made this necklace the first time was that it was too short. Now if I had gone ahead and threaded my tiger tail through the loops in the clasp, the holes, instead of using a jump ring what would have happened? I would have had to have started all over again. So my big tip here is always, always attach your tiger tail to a jump ring and then put it through your clasp. That's my big learning from this necklace. Now I actually found when I made this necklace that my necklace was slightly too tight. It felt just a little bit uncomfortable. So what I did, because I had added my clasp with a jump ring, is I could undo my jump ring and add an extra four millimeter jump ring. And that just gave me enough to make me feel comfortable. So I am going to do that now. I'm gonna put another jump ring onto that jump ring I've just added. So let's do that. So opening my jump ring, and this time I am going to thread it through that four millimeter jump ring there. Now I wouldn't have had to have done this had I used a six millimeter, so there you go. <laughs> and I'm closing up that jump ring. There's my clasp with its two jump rings on each side. Now I can go ahead and put my tiger tail on. And I know that I've got that peace of mind that it's going to be just that tiny bit longer than it was last time. Now we're going to thread on a crimp tube and then a piece of our French wire. So just taking my one of my crimp tubes and these are magical crimp tubes because I'm going to be using my magical crimping plier. Then taking a tiny piece of your French wire and threading it on. So that's what I have now. You can see my crimp bead and my French wire. Then I'm going to put on the jump ring from my clasp. I'm just undoing my clasp and working with one piece at a time. And so I'm going to thread my jump ring onto my tiger tail. Now the beauty of using a French wire is that you don't need to worry about your tiger tail falling out of your jump ring if your jump rings are well closed because it's basically an insurance policy. Now I'm going to come back down through my crimp tube and I'm going to go through a bead or two. Can't get a hold of it. There we go. So what I'm aiming for here, you can see my French wire is all on one side. So what I'm aiming for is to pull it all down so that my French wire comes down and forms a loop like that. Now I'm going to take my magical crimping tool and I am going to give my crimp tube a squeeze. I'm going to turn it round and give it another squeeze. So there it is with its crimp tube all crimped. Then I'm going to trim off my short piece of tiger tail. And 
now I'm going to run all of the beads up to the other end. Making sure that I tucked in that tail. So we're going to repeat that for this end. So we're going to start off with a crimp tube. And then a piece of French wire. And now I'm going to put on the jump ring from the other end of the clasp. So just feeding my tiger tail through that jump ring and back down through my crimp tube. Sometimes these magical crimp tubes can be quite tight to get through, but you get there eventually. <laughs> and down through a couple of beads as well. Now if you get to this point and you can't pull it any further, what you need to do is pull your crimp tube down and just keep moving it down until you get close to the beads and then pull it up again. And you might need to do that several times. Now you also want to make sure that you don't do it too tight. You do still need your necklace to be able to move and that is one of the biggest issues people have with crimping their necklaces is that it makes them too tight so there's no movement in the beads. You actually need to leave it just a little bit of space. Now I'm going to take my magical crimping tool and crimp my crimp tube again. Now if you've never crimped before I will leave you a link in the description box below to a video all about how to crimp, different ways to crimp too. So if you don't have this wonderful plier there's some other ways you can do that. And now I'm just going to cut off the end. All right now we need to repeat that for the other strand. So I'm taking my bead stopper off and putting on my crimp tube and my piece of French wire. Trim off the end. So let's try it on and see if it fits. Oh no! I want to take a moment to thank everyone who has commented on my videos lately. I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. I read them all and I do respond to them as well. It inspires me to continue to bring you content. Thank you so much and if you're enjoying this one and you haven't yet please subscribe and hit that notification bell and also give me a thumbs up. If you would like to see more of me still then you can also join my private membership group here on YouTube and you can do that by clicking the join button down below and if you click that button it will tell you all about the benefits of joining. Also I have a new service on my website you can book a private consultation with me if you would like and also go to our website and sign up for our newsletter because that way you will never miss anything that's going on in my world of jewelry making anyway. <laughs> what happened was this tiny little pin here came out of my clasp out of this piece of my clasp and now it won't stay together. I replaced the clasp really quickly because I'd used those jump rings so all I needed to do was undo my jump ring, take off the fending clasp that was broken and put a new one on. So that was a really really quick and easy fix. Now if I had put my tiger tail through the loop of the clasp or the hole of the clasp I would have been in trouble. I would have had to start all over again. But now I can go to my cocktail party. I actually really like this necklace. I like it even more with the blue than I did with the original red heart that I made it for the party. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section below. Remember to click the top link in the description box below and that will take you to the blog post which will set out everything that I have used today as well as step-by-step -step instructions if you prefer that. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Have a wonderful day and I will see you again soon.